Good evening, everyone. I guess I'm audible. Yeah. Uh, the speaker before me, I guess, have set very good standards, and someone complimented him on the presentation. And I guess post lunch, the pressure is high, like the gentleman said. <laughs> so I will try to keep it brief. And the two major reasons, if I see as a tech policy angles, and a lot of people being technical professionals out here, and I'm going to deviate a bit, but I will try to conjure over the end of the submission of the files. And the two reasons, because when you land from Delhi to Bangalore and to come over here, eventually it takes four hours. <laughs> So, and by the time, but I had only two major reasons to come because Bangalore being one of my own city. So I'm basically from Bangalore, so that was one of the reasons. And second, I feel there's a huge difference from Bangalore to Delhi in an angle where we find all the technical professionals out here. The understanding of policy paradigm is a bit less. And I thought I will interact with you all out so that it will give us an opportunity to collaborate in future and help us in the country from being the fifth largest GDP in the world at 3.2 to become the third largest by 2030. So yeah. So I guess most of the people know what G20 is, but eventually don't understand in a lot. And we have made sure that we go everywhere, maximize the opportunity, and at the same time, educate the masses as we can. So if you know what is G20, eventually is the post G7 and UN, which was driven by the Western world and Europe. Uh, Soviet Union, Europe, and Americas, there was emerging market economies who wanted to come together and make sure that the economic development is happening in the world and every country contributes to it. Now, if you see the countries contribute around 85% of the global GDP, they look after 80% of the global trade, and they contribute also the participant of the 70% of the population, and at the same time, we are also emitting 67% of the CHG emission. So the greenhouse gas emission which we talk about and that's where the EV angle came into picture because of the climate change. And the Paris Accord Agreement of UNFCCC which talks about 1.5 degrees Celsius. But people don't know how and where it started. So this is one thing I wanted to highlight. Now what happened was G20 being one of the most successful event which we have done in the present government again in presence of the Honorable PM, and we got one of the highest outcome for the country with 104 declaration. And what eventually it talks about? It talks about one earth, one family, and one future. Now what one earth talks about is the Green Development Pact for Sustainable Future, which eventually I will try to bring in how the future of energy transition, where the sustainable mobility being one part of it, and then we have green hydrogen where the policies angles are coming up, and then there is tripling of renewable energy, which also helps and supports the energy ecosystem. On the one family side, if you see, there is gender equality and women empowerment we talk about. But then I will always say, if you see the number of women who are at the CEO position contributes around 3% of the global world. So men in the room, we need to come together and collaborate around it. Then we need to talk about how we look forward to accelerating the progress on sustainable development goals. There is a need of strong, sustainable, balanced, inclusive growth. And suddenly, the countries are looking at us and that all the tech people. The digital public infrastructure is booming like anything. And post G20 and with G20, all the countries, including America, has reached out to and complimented us with the kind of progress we have achieved in ONDC, UPI, Bharat Pay, payments, COVID, whatever. Now, if you know there is a need of reform of MDVs, which is multi-development banks. What multilateral development banks they need to understand is that going forward, there is a push from direct to indirect form of lending, and the countries have to come together. Now that's here where I will talk about, and I will get into going forward, how the EVs come into play. So if you see energy transition is going to be the call, and that's where the every country, including India and the global world, is talking about. And what are the energy transitions policies where the countries are coming? Whether it's the hydrogen principle, the green hydrogen, we talk about green being the color, but the major form is that green is being produced from the renewable, and we have to make sure that country we are. From the present need of 42% of energy capacity being made by renewable, and have a vision of 50% by 2030, we'll be able to achieve it with a 500 gigawatt or not. And that's where you see there is a need for tripling of renewable energy capacity because we are standing at 3.37 terawatt globally with a need of 11 terawatt by 2030. And that has been supplemented by IRENA and IA report 
which was recently launched yesterday. And you talk about Global Biofoil Alliance, which has been appreciated by the, all the countries and being released under the premises on the day of the G20 New Release Leaders Declaration. And the biofuels are going, including green hydrogen, green ammonia, are the fuels for the future. So that is something all the people out here to look forward to. Now, when I would focus majorly is on the emphasis for the need of 5.8, 5.9 trillion in the new energy and clean energy technologies. You talk about batteries. The gentleman spoke about batteries being in the consider. I don't know how many of you know, but this is the year the person who invented the lithium iron batteries, Dr. Goodenough, passed away. And he received the Nobel Prize in chemistry. So we don't accolade the person who has done the things for us, but we always try to see what can be done and what can be done for In the same way, if you talk about the future of clean energy technologies, uh, Mahindra spoke about a lot of things. I will see the technology is going to come if we have to make sure that all the sectors which want to move towards the technology paradigm or not. There's still a lot of technology companies which want to provide services, but the in innovation and the kind of structuring is missing, which needs to be taken further. Now let's talk about what is happening on the electric mobility, where the government started, what it is presently, and what it was. So if you see FAME 2, ACC PLI, Auto PLI, and everything, why well, there was a need of EV end of the day? We were pretty good with IC. We were driving a Mahindra, Maruti, Hyundai. What stopped us? And then people have a lot of issues. Someone said the cost of the car is an issue for the EV. I will say 90% of the people who sit here have a range anxiety. Every, no, and if you see, everyone in the metro doesn't drive more than 150 kilometers on a week. But everyone wants a vehicle which has a 400 kilometer range. The bigger question is that everyone has a range anxiety which says, Ki bhai, main wahan se wahan jaunga, to wapis aap ki nahi. <laughs> So that is the issue. Now, what was the need of EV? If you see EVs, oils, and dependence, if you see Ukraine, Russia, if you see Israel, Palestine, all the global world in the past, were at war. For what? Energy. And the country we are, 1.4 billion, where we are heading towards, is going to be that our need of the energy is going to be immense going forward. And it allows, at the same time, to be dependent on others and the countries and impacts our GDP as well. Because we are energy dependent, non independent. And if you want to be energy independent by 2047 and achieve the net zero goal by 2070, how will you do that? Because your 12% of the CAG emission is being done by the transport. And that's where the focus of EV came into play. Now, why there is a need of EV, what we are doing on the EV, and what's happening on the EV? If you see presently, one of the presentations spoke about how there is a market movement towards EVs. But at the same time, we have to understand India is still not 3% of the global EV manufacturing. We are achieved 1 lakh vehicles in the last year on annual basis. But if you see, most of the countries being dominated is China, followed by Europe, and then America with 8%. Now, suddenly, the movement of all the investment is shifted to America because of the IRA Act, which was being brought by Biden government last to last year. Now, this is the vision of India for 2030, which was recently released by Niti Ayo the think tank policy making of the country. Now, the question is that can we achieve 80% penetration by 2030? Yes or no? Can we achieve the persons? One of the person asked, what is the future of the three-wheeler market? I will say there is a lot of future of the three-wheeler market because it's an untapped potential. And the company you should watch out is Mahindra Last Mobility. And that person who's from Mahindra, I will compliment him that Mahindra as an organization is doing a lot of work on the three-wheeler segment. Now, on the four-wheeler segment, there is a 50% penetration we are expecting, but will be able to or not. The question comes, there is only one player who has been able to brought multiple models in the various range segment of the pricing from 0 to 5, 5 to 10, 10 to 15, 15 to 20, and that's only Tata Group. A lot of other players are still not able to. Now, the e-bus 
is one of the factory in which have been pushed under the public transportation segment because it is directly connected to what we are able to bring for the future, for our future generation. Because as per all the reports, if we don't control on the climate change, the global world will come to an end and we have to focus towards it. And the public transportation is an angle. Presently, on the roads, there are 1.75 lakh vehicles running on the buses, out of which 50,000, there is an immediate need for the buses to be shifted. And the government, along with the state and the center and the STUs, have collaborated and come together to make sure that all the buses going forward should be electric buses. And that's the opportunity for every organization from the tech side and industries to come together and work towards it. This is where the future of transportation looks like. What is happening? Where we are, where the other countries are, where the Nordic nations are, where the Americas are, where the China is. And you can have a close look, and you can see where we have to progress. Now, I, I will also like to highlight what the government is doing. If you see, government has pushed FAME to faster adaptation of mobility, ACC scheme, for the battery manufacturing, and the PLI scheme for the auto sector. That totally comes around 55,000 crore. These are the initiatives by the center towards the penetration and the uptake of the electric mobility in the country. You see what we have done. On the direct side, Ministry of Heavy Industry has come up with the policy. On the direct benefit side, Ministry of Finance have provided you something. At the same time, they have indirect benefits coming into play. And if you see Ministry of Road Transport have provided green license plates, Ministry of Housing has made sure that charging infrastructure becomes a major factor in. The buildings going forward should have a point into concern. And what Niti Aayog has been doing, working on the policy. Now, I'll talk about what is the major angle of EVs which everyone talks about the white elephant, but no one wants to consider about the batteries. If you see batteries contribute around 35 to 40% of the costing of any EV in the market. Any car you take, any two-wheeler you take, any three-wheeler you take, the range varies from 20 to 45%. But eventually, if I come to a ballpark number, it will be around 35 to 40%. Now what's happening? Which country is dominating? Any guesses? is China. The fight is between the big, world's biggest producer and the world's biggest consumer, US and China. Where are we? So if you see the overview of lithium-ion factories, what it has been, where it has been, and where we are, there has been announcement of 1,000 gigawatt hour of battery manufacturing in the world, majority of them being the China angle. Do anyone can, can name me five companies who have been into the battery manufacturing and not battery packs I'm talking about. I'm talking about cell manufacturing. You won't be able to. So this is where we understood that we have to bring a scheme which incentivize players to start manufacturing batteries. That was ACC PLI scheme. And this is the condition which the government of India brought. There will be a transported basic mechanism. We will have minimum of 5 gigawatt. We will have maximum of a 20 gigawatt a bidder can apply for. And to achieve and make sure that there's a domestic value addition of the Made in India initiative, what we achieve. We achieve 25% in first two years and 60% in first five years. And that's where the players came into play. And if you see all Ola, then there is Tata, who has recently announced their factories in UK and India, in Gujarat, Sanan. And uh, there have been Mahindra in Maharashtra. Then there have been announcement of Tamil Nadu as well from the TVS group. Then Reliance and Rajesh coming into different parts of Karnataka and Gujarat respectively. These are the few names I can announce. Then there are small players who are coming big time, whether it's Godi and the other companies who are fo focusing on one to two gigawatt. The others I've spoken about are they coming with five, 10, and 20. The economies of scale of a battery manufacturing can be achieved if you go forward with an achievement of 5 and 10 and 20. Batteries, the point I want to highlight also here is that battery should not be considered only for a mobility. Battery has a lot of complementary activities when it comes to renewable. Renewable energy has an intermittency angle. If you want to make sure that renewable penetrates or tripling and we shift from thermal to renewable, 
you need batteries into play. And that's where the battery manufacturing of stationary storage come into play. Now, there are the technologies where the battery manufacturing and the stationary storage are. You cannot have a lithium ion for stationary storage. You need to work towards sodium ion. You need to explore other battery technologies. What you have? You have supercapacitors. You have lithium metal. There are a lot of things which I can talk about, about on technology side, but for the time being, I would not like to it. Now, what I would like to highlight, if you want to see the ecosystem grow, what you need to do. And in what's the initiative the government is taking? On the battery manufacturing, on the component manufacture, you have 18,000 crore, which is translates to around 2.5 billion USD. For the auto PLI, where we sell, become self-sustainable in the manufacturing of the auto components, we have 3.6 billion USD. For the FAME 2, we have 1.4 billion USD. We have started, see, one of the major reasons of uptake of bikers, no one says, the market of the pricing, if someone goes for an EV, the banks are not providing the loans. It's the NBFC, and the NBFC charge you around 18 to 25%. No one talks about it. What is the reason? There is no secondary market for the EVs till now. People have not penetrated. So for that to be considered, what we did, we came up with a vehicle loan support, with the first is guarantee mechanism with the World Bank. Now we talk about EVs, 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 but eventually have we given it a thought that circular economy is going to play a major role? What we are doing on the circular side, there is going, once you have a lot of EVs, batteries, components into play, what you need? You need to recycle them. You have to provide a second life of the batteries. Because lithium, no matter what you say, has a very strong environmental impact. And that's why the, all the MITs, Cambridge, Boston universities are working towards finding the future technology which is not going to have environmental impact. And the way the global world is moving, the climate change is a paradigm where every country is focusing towards. So what we have to do, we have to look into recycling. We have to talk about swapping. We have to talk about companies like who are doing on the circular economy. You have companies in the startup angle ranging from two-wheeler manufacturing like Ola and Etho. All the startups have an opportunity. You have a two-wheeler manufacturing Ola Etho. You have a four-wheeler, the cars is coming into play. In batteries, you have all the new companies, Godi and all coming into. In the recycling also, you have Atero there. So it's an opportunity of the startup companies to come together. Battery management system is going to play a major role. Have you explored it? No. So I just close the line. The next decade is poised to be India's decade. And it's not me who is talking about it. It's Morgan Stanley. So Morgan Stanley says that if India is not taking this opportunity, we are going to miss the bus 20 years back in the semiconductors. And I hope in this time we all come together, collaborate, and work so that we make sure that the future is ours. Thank you so much.